What is Tableau embedding? Well, the term embedding simply means to put one thing into something else. If I take a circle and I put it inside of a square, I've embedded the circle in the square. And in the context of Tableau, when you do exactly that, you're basically taking Tableau and you're putting it inside of another system or application. That is in essence what Tableau embedding is. But in this video, I'm going to break down all the detail you need to know to understand terms like embedding, embedded, and how exactly that works with Tableau Public, Tableau Desktop, Tableau Cloud, Tableau Server, and what are the benefits of doing this in a business context. As ever, let's get stuck in. If you've watched my 10 minute explainer on Tableau, you'll know that Tableau is a growing platform. And since I made that video, Tableau has morphed into an even bigger platform. And so when we talk about embedding, it's important to understand what parts of the Tableau platform you can embed. And in this video, I want to break that journey down and that explanation into four sections. The first thing I want to talk about is why we should do and think about embedding, what you can specifically embed, and then following that, where you can embed these objects. And then the very final thing is to talk more broadly about embedded analytics and why it might be a concept to pay more attention to in the current climate and also in terms of where technology is heading. Let's get into the first item. Why should you think about embedding? Ultimately, there's only one reason that companies choose to embed Tableau elsewhere, and that is because they want to use the Tableau platform instead of having to build their own version of an analytics tool. And so when you extrapolate that a little bit further, you start to think about use cases where businesses might actually embed Tableau inside of other applications. And there's fundamentally two groups. There's internal use cases and there's external use cases. Internal use cases are things like employee portals or internal systems and processes where employees need to be able to see information about the business so that they can act and move the business forward. External use cases are when a business realizes that they hold on to data that's valuable. And so what they want to do is turn that data into a commodity that they can sell to other businesses and their customers. And so in order to do that, they need to present the data in a specific way, make it easy to access, and lo and behold, guess what? Tableau has a platform that allows you to do that. So in the external context, Tableau is essentially becoming the white label service that these businesses are using to share data with their customers. And so those are the two splits. And so ultimately it boils down to business use cases. If it's internal, then you're likely trying to make it easier and faster for people to make decisions, bringing data to portals, bringing data to where people work. And if it's external, then you've probably taken that idea one step further and you've built an application or a portal where your own customers can log in and use that data. Okay, now that I've explained why you might embed, let's move on to what you can embed. Generally speaking, there are four, maybe even five things you can embed. And let's start off by covering the first one, which you've probably come across before, which is a view. Now, it's a bit confusing to be detailed about exactly what a view is in the Tableau sphere, but I'll keep it simple in this video, and I'll just call it either a dashboard or a single chart that you wanna share with people. You maybe have already done this. Maybe you've gone to Tableau Public, you've clicked on that share button, and you've grabbed the embed code. That is essentially what you're doing there. You're grabbing the code that allows you to embed that visualization inside of a blog or inside of another web page. It's really that simple. In fact, I've probably just shown you how to do it whilst I'm speaking. The next thing you can do is you can embed the editing experience. Now, the editing experience is a little bit more nuanced. You need to be a creator in order to use this, but ultimately it allows you to build your own charts for the purpose of exploring data. And the benefit of doing this is that as a business, you don't have to build your own design tool to build and work with data. You can essentially just take Tableau, uh, take the editing experience that's actually quite popular and has been copied by many other tools around the internet, and you can just use that on your own data source to allow people to do visual exploration with their data. It's quite simple. Now, these next two are a little bit more nuanced because frankly, I don't think they'll exist for much longer but these are specifically Tableau metrics and ask data. Now, these are two strange parts of the Tableau platform. I call them strange because at this moment in time, AI is a huge technology, and it's likely that these two are about to change to some completely different capabilities. For example, Tableau Pulse in the future will probably allow you to embed its capabilities around other places. So strictly speaking, let's say there are four things that you can embed. A view, the editing experience, Tableau Pulse 
as data or metrics as they formerly called. And there's actually a fifth one. You can actually embed an empty data source, but that's more of a quirky thing and that's for nerds, but we'll cover that maybe in another detailed video. Let's keep this simple for now. And now let's go in and talk about where you can embed these things. So when it comes to where you can embed these objects, it's actually quite simple. Uh, you can embed them on web pages. And the reason that is, is because if you go to Tableau Server or Tableau Cloud, these are themselves just web pages feeding off other systems and applications. And so that's the best way to think about it. Sometimes you might hear the terminology of applications, but I just like to think of this as a web page. Now, when you go and get your embed code, you'll be given some HTML and JavaScript. This is essentially the code required to run the visualization. And Tableau actually uses this to do a couple of things, to query the data from the Tableau server, bring it to the browser, and then render the visualization inside of a box, or render the editing experience or whatever you've decided to embed inside of your application. That's essentially how this works. Now, the key things you'll need to do and make sure you're working with are authentication, because in order for you to make sure you're sharing the right data with the right person, you're gonna to need to know who they are. So this is where things get a little bit technical, but it's important to understand that your application, the app or the thing you're building, takes care of authentication, essentially making sure that Tim is actually Tim. And once you've done that, you need to hand that information over to Tableau Server or Tableau Cloud. And you do that through a very sort of complicated authentication and trusted system. But long story short, it's a handshake between the two applications to say, hey, I've verified who Tim is and here are his credentials. And then Tableau takes those credentials and figures out what I can and can't see as it would do on Tableau Server or Tableau Cloud. And then it hands the data back to that web code that we talked about, the JavaScript and the HTML. And then that renders the visualization as it's supposed to or whatever you've chosen to embed. So that's essentially the simple process. And you're doing this inside of your application. I'll try and put some examples of embedded applications. And I'll also try and include some URLs that are actually public available visualizations that are doing exactly this. The only difference is they don't need any authentication because they're just public to the whole world. But if you're working inside of a business context, you'd probably need to log in or you might need to use your username and password in order to see them. But at the end of the day, you'd never know that there were a Tableau and you'd never see the Tableau logo in any part. The only exception to this is Tableau Public. Because that's free, Tableau will keep that little logo at the bottom of the page to let you know that this visualization is being made by Tableau. So that's sort of the nuts and bolts. Now it gets far more complex. And if you're a developer who's looking for the real nerdy stuff, don't worry, this video is part of a full series where I'm gonna go through all the examples. In the next video, we're going to talk about the Tableau Embedding Playground. This actually allows you to test out the capability of embedding and it actually generates code for you. So you can use that code to go and do embedding in real life. But for now, that's more or less the technical concept. The very last thing to do is to talk about embedded analytics. The final thing to cover is what is meant when people talk about embedded analytics? What does that concept, what does that term mean? Well, in this whole video, we've actually been describing the technical process of involving Tableau in an embedded analytics solution. But when we talk about embedded analytics, it's actually in a broader context. A business might be building an application or a system or a process, and embedded analytics simply means finding a tool that allows the process or the application to have analytics within itself. So a good example might be if we take Amazon.com. Amazon.com currently doesn't, in my opinion, have a good embedded analytics solution because there's no easy way for you to see the total transactions over time and download all your transactions and see the categories and visualize them and tell a story about your Amazon purchases. And so as an example, um, Amazon, in my opinion, doesn't have an embedded analytics solution. And it maybe doesn't need one because once you've ordered the product, they probably don't want you to feel guilty about your purchases. So in that instance, probably not a good idea. But your bank, for example, might actually be interested in the concept of embedded analytics when it comes to showing you transactions in your bank account. Banks these days are interested in making sure you know about how you're spending your money. And instead of having to build their own visualization tool, they might give Tableau a call and they might say, hey, Tableau, could we include your application, Tableau, as part of an embedded solution inside of our banking app? And as, as a result, what you'll see is when you go to look at your transaction, you might get a little bar chart, little visualization, and that's actually being powered by Tableau. And that's all embedded analytics is. 
taking another tool, taking another technology and putting it inside of your own system. There's several benefits, not least you don't have to go and build it yourself, but actually sometimes um, someone else will have built a better analytics store than you possibly could because those companies are just focused on that specific end goal. That is their business, that is how they work. And so you might've heard of Tableau doing this and you'll also hear other technologies being used. D3 as an example is a pretty common one, but ultimately, that's all it is. It's just a concept about putting analytics inside of a solution that you're building. In the next video, we're going to go check out the embedding playground. That is a tool that allows you to test out the capability of embedding. And it also allows you to generate the code required to do exactly that in lots of different scenarios, including code samples that lets you do far more advanced things that you can now do with the new embedding API version three. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.